Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Joanna Yun Jacek, who recently fought her last fight at UFC 275 after losing to Zhang Wei Li by spinning back fist. It was a beautiful finish, but sadly for Joanna, she lost the fight, and because of it, she decided to call it a career. And this one definitely stung because I am a huge fan of Joanna, especially during her days as the strawweight champion. But now that her career is over, that makes me ask the question, how good was Joanna Janjacek actually? So Joanna began her MMA career on May 19th, 2012, and prior to her debut in MMA, she had a lot of combat sports experience already as she was competing in Muay Thai and kickboxing. And in these fights, she displayed how good she was on the feet. After this, Joanna had two amateur MMA bouts before turning pro. And right away, she found success as she went on a six-fight win streak in where she picked apart her opponents on the feet and she was able to keep the action there because she was doing so well with her takedown defense i swear there was no point in these six fights where Joanna was on her back and even if she did get taken down i don't think it was a real takedown as she got up fairly quickly but yeah she was looking good on the feet she was defending the takedowns and even when the fight did get to the ground she was the one who was controlling the action she got a hold of a few of her opponents backs in fact in her her second fight against Lily Kazik, Joanna was able to take her back and lock up the rear naked choke, making this the only submission win of her career. So after going 6-0, she signed with the UFC and made her debut with the promotion on July 26, 2014. Her first couple of fights were decision wins to Juliana Lima and Claudia Gadelia. And in both of them, Joanna was controlling the action on the feet by pressing forward and connecting with combos. And once again, she was defending the takedowns very well. But I would say she was having a harder time against Against Claudia Gadelia. Because even though Joanna knocked Claudia down early on in this fight, Claudia began to find success of her own with her grappling. And although Joanna continued to find success on the feet, by the end it was a very close fight. But Joanna was awarded with the split decision and remained undefeated. After that win, she fought for the UFC Women's Strawweight Championship. Her opponent was champion Carla Esparza. And Joanna absolutely dominated in this fight. She denied Carla's takedown downs and this led to Joanna picking her apart on the feet. Carla had no answer and eventually in round two, she ate punches that forced the ref to step in, making Joanna the new UFC women's strawweight champion and the first Polish champion in the UFC. And this really brought Joanna's name into the limelight as she went from someone who was very unknown to one of the most exciting fighters to watch, especially now that she was the champion. Because aside from her fun performance, performances, she also had a vicious attitude that made her so likable, especially as she continued winning, which is what she was doing after she won the belt. Joanna defended her strawweight championship five times, and in these fights, she was electric. None of these opponents were able to compete with her on the feet. Her first title fight was against Jessica Penne, who she absolutely destroyed on the feet, and Jessica's face was an absolute mess after her nose broke. In her fight against Valerie Latorno, she landed the the most significant strikes in a title fight. She also set the record for the most leg kicks in a fight. And when most of these opponents tried to bring the fight down, Ioana did a good job in either defending or getting back up quickly if she did get taken down. The only fight I would say she did have troubles in with the wrestling was against Claudia Gadelia in their second fight. Because Claudia was taking her down in the first couple of rounds and was doing a lot of damage from above. But in the final three rounds, Ioana came back and began to pick Claudia Claudia apart on the feet, and by the end she won by unanimous decision. It was a very impressive performance considering the adversity she had to face early on and the overall buildup which began from their first fight and continued into the Ultimate Fighter where they were coaches. But the most danger that Joanna was in during this run was against fellow Polish fighter Karolina Kowalkiewicz, a fighter who she fought as an amateur and defeated, and although Joanna was controlling the action on the feet in this title fight, Karolina connected with a right hand that rocked Joanna bad and the fight looked close to being finished. But ultimately, she survived and ended up winning by unanimous decision. Now, as impressive as it was for Joanna to face adversity yet still come out with the win, I think her best performance was against Jessica Andrade because Jessica was also dangerous on the feet, but more so with her knockout power. So throughout this fight, she was pressing forward and was trying to look for the big shots to land. But Joanna did so well in evading all of her attacks. And in return, she connected with some nice 
those counters. And if Jessica wasn't rushing in, Ioana did very well in attacking from the outside. It was very reminiscent to a bull and a matador, with Ioana being the matador. And by the end, she won by unanimous decision. So after this dominant performance, Ioana was at the top of the women's strawweight division. It truly seemed like no one was going to stop her anytime soon. And if she defended her belt one more time, she was going to tie Ronda Rousey for the most title defenses in women's MMA in the UFC. So the stakes were high, but many believed she was going to do it, especially with her next opponent being Rose Namajunas, who was a 6-3 and three fighter, and although she was very solid, many believed that she wasn't ready to be fighting for a UFC championship, especially against someone like Ioana. But Rose shocked the world as she finished Ioana in the first round with punches, handing Ioana her first defeat. Now this was devastating, but with how long of a champion Ioana was, she got an immediate title fight against Rose. So the two fought for a second time at UFC 223, and in contrast to the first fight, this one went all five rounds and it was an absolute war. The two went back and forth on the feet, and as technical as Ioana is with her striking, so was Rose. It was a striking masterclass from both women. And although some believe Ioana did enough to win this fight, by the end, Rose won by unanimous decision. Regardless, Ioana came back three months later and bounced back with a decision win against Tisha Torres. And then at UFC 231, she moved up to flyweight to fight for the women's flyweight championship a belt which at that point was vacant. Her opponent was Valentina Shevchenko, who she fought in Muay Thai three times before, with Valentina winning all three times. And she continued that tradition in their MMA fight, as she controlled Ioana on the feet and on the ground for most of the time. Ioana had her moments, but it was clear that the size was too much for her. So by the end, Valentina won by unanimous decision. Regardless, she returned back down to strawweight to fight Michelle Watterson, and after a five round fight, Ioana won by unanimous decision. After this win, Ioana fought for the Women's Strawweight Championship at UFC 248. Her opponent was champion Zheng Wei Li, and this fight may be the greatest fight in the history of women's MMA because Ioana and Wei Li went back and forth for five rounds, pressing forward, throwing combos, eating shots. Both women showed so much heart in this war. And although some believe Ioana did enough to win this one, by the end, Whaley was awarded with the split decision. After this brutal fight, Ioana was out for two years. Some of it was for recovery, some of it was to enjoy life and have fun, and some of it was because she didn't want to fight without a crowd, because during the pandemic, they were having most of their fights at the apex, and she didn't want to do that because she wanted to fight in a stadium full of fans. But another reason was also because of contract negotiations. She wanted more money, she had been vocal about about making good money outside of fighting. So I feel like that also was a reason for her long layoff. Regardless, she finally came back at UFC 275 to fight Wei Li Zhang for a second time, but this time it wasn't for the strawweight championship but it was clear that it was a number one contender bout. And much like their first fight, these two went back and forth. And although Ioana had her moments on the feet, so did Wei Li, who was also mixing in takedowns and doing damage from above. But overall, it looked like it was going to be three rounds of high-paced back and forth action. But in round two, Wei Li connected with a spinning back fist that knocked Ioana out. And with this defeat, Ioana began to take her gloves off and announced in her post-fight interview that she was going to retire from MMA. Because as much as she enjoyed fighting, she also enjoyed her life outside of it. She's making money outside of fighting. She wants to start a family. And with her turning 35 soon, I think this was the right decision for Ioana to make for herself. So after going 16 and 5 in a career that saw her become the UFC Women's Strawweight Champion, how good was Ioana Janjacek actually? Personally, for me, she is one of my favorite fighters in MMA history. In her prime she was such an exciting fighter because not only was she very good but she also had the persona now in terms of fighting of course she was a striker first her muay thai and kickboxing background 
transitioned perfectly into MMA. In fact, I would say she was probably one of the most technical strikers in the early days of women's MMA in the UFC. There wasn't really many fighters like her who would pick their opponents apart so technically. Her pressure on the feet was intimidating. She would press forward with combos at a high volume. She would mix punches and kicks so effortlessly and would attack every part of the body. And in the clinch, she did well in connecting with brutal knees and elbows. And she was able to do this for all five rounds because her cardio was superb. And to add to that, she was a tall and long straw weight. She used her size advantage a lot in her fights as she would pick her opponents apart from afar, press forward with ease, or counter if they come forward. And this was all effective due to her footwork and overall speed. In every facet of the striking department, she was better than most of her opponents. And the reason why her Muay Thai and kickboxing transitioned so well into MMA was because of her amazing takedown defense. She defended her opponent's takedowns very well, and because of it, she forced the action to stay on the feet. And even if they did take her down, she'd pop back up right away. Even in the clinch, she was very good because she was able to implement her striking while there, but was also able to defend the takedowns as well, which a lot of her opponents tried to do while in the clinch. And although she didn't have that one-shot knockout power, the pressure and the volume just became way too much for some of her opponents. So overall, she was an amazing striker. And this led to her capturing a UFC belt, which she held onto for a while. And her success in MMA translated into her success outside of it, because she was Poland's first UFC champion. So you can only imagine how big of a star she became in her home country. But even around the world, she became a big star as people liked her confidence and were rooting for her because of it. She was known for trash talking a lot in the buildup of her fights. And honestly, I was a fan of it when she was able to back it up because it was fun. And that's what this new 115 pound division needed. They needed someone who would amp it up. They needed a star. That's why I give credit to Joanna for the growth of the UFC women's strawweight division. She was a badass and it was exciting to have someone like her hold a UFC championship. And although she wasn't Ronda Rousey level of fame, she was still up there. So as great as it is that she was becoming popular outside of fighting, I think that popularity was also the reason for her downfall. Because the more popular she became in the UFC, the more opportunities she got outside of fighting. The amount of things Joanna was doing on her social media, whether it was posting pictures of where she was at, whether it was doing ads. And on top of that, she was doing other media appearances, especially in Poland. So she was becoming very busy now. And after that defeat to Rose, it only continued. She was still doing photo shoots. She was still doing interviews, posting on social media. She was no longer just focused on fighting like before. The hunger that she once had was gone. And although she was still one of the best female fighters in the world, she was unable to get back to the top after losing her belt. And that was because of her focus. Very similar to Conor McGregor. Although he was doing it to a greater degree, Conor too was starting to do things outside of MMA. He was making more money outside of MMA. So you could only imagine how that brings down one's motivation to fight. That initial hunger that they once had is no longer there. And for Joanna, who went 2-5 and five after her win against Jessica, on Raj, it was clear that her head wasn't fully in MMA anymore. But look, I'm not shaming her for that at all. In fact, I'm happy that she was able to find a way to make money outside of fighting. I'm always happy for a fighter who does that. And look, in the end of the day, although she went 2-5 and five in her last 7 fights, those 5 defeats were to the very best fighters. And even some people right now are saying that Ioana doesn't have to retire yet. She can still continue. But in my opinion, it's clear that Joanna's motivation for fighting is no longer here, especially now that she wants to become a mother. And with her being a successful businesswoman now, there truly isn't any point to fight if it's not to become the champion. And who knows how much she changed as a fighter after her first fight with Wei Li, because that was one of those career-altering fights, and it was a reason why Joanna was on the sidelines for two years. So whether it was all the damage accumulated in that war, or ring rust, or a mix of both, maybe Maybe Joanna just simply doesn't have it anymore. So alongside her business ventures outside of fighting, I agree with Joanna's decision to retire. And now that it's done, I can say that right now, I still consider her to be the greatest female strawweight fighter in MMA history. Because although Rose Namajunas
Jonas won the belt twice and defended those belts one time each, I still don't think that beats Ioana's five title defenses. And like I said, Ioana is the reason for the women's strawweight division being the most exciting one out of all the four female divisions in the UFC. She built that division up to what it is right now. She was in some amazing fights and put on some incredible performances. And although her badass persona wasn't working as well for her when she was losing fights, when she was winning them, she was at her absolute peak and it was a delight to watch. That's why I would give her MMA career a 9 out of 10. But what do you think? How good was Ioana Janjacek actually? And what's your favorite moment from her career? But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you on my next one.